Today we're going to talk about rise time. Um, it's probably one of the most common measurements to get wrong and so I'll show you some of the reasons why. So here I'm looking at a 200 kilohertz signal um, and I'm measuring frequency and rise time. That's showing 200 kilohertz frequency, 1.7 nanoseconds, or sorry, 17 nanosecond rise time. Uh, I'll just take a quick screenshot so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, <clears throat> now I, I've, I've set this up deliberately that I know this is wrong. Okay, our frequency is real, certainly 200 kilohertz, but the rise time we're measuring is at the moment limited by the bandwidth. I've deliberately set my bandwidth limit at 20 megahertz. Now if I bring our bandwidth up to 200 megahertz, we now see there's there's ringing on our signal. And it's showing a rise time of 3.1 nanoseconds. Okay, let's see if that is for completeness. Now, again, I'm pretty confident that's not an accurate measurement. Reason being, one, I have a long ground lead in use, so we've got inductance here that's going to be contributing to this ringing. Um, two, I haven't optimised the time base. I want to expand that signal out so I can see my rising edge and make sure I've got lots of samples across that edge to get, get a maximum time resolution. Um, and third thing, I've still got my 200 megahertz bandwidth limit. So we need to understand about bandwidth and rise time. There's a, a simple formula which equates the two. Basically 0.35 divided by the bandwidth gives you the rise time of the instrument. Um, it's pretty close, it depends on the, the input shape of the filter, but as a rule of thumb, 0.35 divided by bandwidth equals rise time. So at the moment I have this set to a 200 megahertz bandwidth, and if you do the sums, that should give us uh, a rise time of the instrument of 1.75 nanoseconds. So that means this input amplifier, if we drove it with an infinite rise time, we would measure 1.75 nanoseconds. In terms of reliably measuring uh, an external rise time, we need the scope to be five times faster than the signal we want to measure. So at the moment we're set, we're, we've deliberately limited the scope to 1.75. So you go five times means a, a reliable signal that could measure would be 8.75 nanoseconds. And we're significantly faster than that. So we can't trust that measurement. So we'll try and set it up as best we can now. If I Optimize the time base, bring that out. Okay, so we can now see the signal we're looking at. And if I optimize the bandwidth, go up to 1 gigahertz. Now, I'm not sure if you see that. I'll, just try and I'll do that again. <coughs> uh, if I go back to 200 megahertz bandwidth, we see a nice clean rising edge looks sensible. We're measuring the 1090 rise time as indicated by the markers. Um, that's configurable in the measurement. We can either do 1090 or 8020 or anything we want to set as a user. Um, we see here a nice straight line. If I increase my bandwidth to 1 gig, I can see that that's not actually a straight line. There's a bit of a curl. There's a kink in that rise. Obviously indicating there's Maybe something not quite right with the signal. So, yeah, that, so that would have been a, a subtlety that's you know, lost without the, the additional bandwidth. One gig instrument has an input rise time of 350 picoseconds and can measure uh, five times that, so it would be 1.75 nanoseconds. <coughs> In this case, we're measuring 2.7 nanoseconds, so we're, no, we're, we're within the capabilities of the scope now. Uh, we still don't have a, a good ground though, we've got this big long ground lead, which isn't helping things. I'll just run again, I'm going to swap this over. Uh, oops. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera very well, but yeah, I've got this little short spring ground clip. We'll come with all your probes. So that just gives us a nice, oops, I'll bring it over here, there we go, a nice, short ground. So the, 
with the short drawing we're minimizing inductance and should minimize the, the ringing that we see on the signal. Okay. So we can see right away. I'm going to screenshot that again. We're still seeing that little kink on the rise, but it's now flat. And just see how it's gone. So that's now showing a rise time of 2.5 nanoseconds. I'm pretty confident that's a, a real measurement. We're within the capabilities of the scope, we've got a sensible ground, we've optimized the time base, you can see what we're measuring, all is well. So just to recap, um, to make an accurate rise time measurement, your instrument needs to be five times faster than the signal you're trying to measure. Um, in this case, we're measuring a signal with a frequency of 200 kilohertz, but the frequency is irrelevant. It's, it's the rise time that's important in this case. Now, I, I know it sounds like something some, some unscrupulous sales guy is going to tell you to get you to buy a faster scope, but to, to make accurate rise time measurements or to see subtleties on fast edges, you really do need to follow that five times rule. You want your, your scope to be five times faster than the signals you're trying to measure.